Counterculture means anti-system, anti-authority. That's counterculture. Counterculture music. Music that is in opposition to the social norms and popularization of mainstream music, media, and society. For as long as there's been music to consider mainstream, there's been countercultural music in its opposition. From the jazz musicians of the 1920s, regarded as undesirable outsiders playing the devil's music, yet shepherding in the jazz era all the same. To artists like Bessie Smith and Muddy Waters helping birth the blues of the 30s. Or Thelonious Monk and Charlie Parker laying the foundation for what would become free modern jazz in the 40s, through Chuck Berry in the 50s inventing rock and roll with his rock and roll radio show, with the 60s seeing the start of a whole counterculture movement in which psychedelic, punk, and many other subcultures of rock got their start. The 70s then seeing people like Gil Scott Heron spearhead some of the earliest examples of rap, and DJ Cool Herc then bringing in hip hop into the talking heads and blondie reigning in the electronic new wave sounds of the 80s. Onto bands like Nirvana helping to find the grunge genre of the 90s. And on and on and on. Where there's a space for culture and music to meet, there'll always exist a space to counter it. I mean, anybody who grew up in poverty or grew up in this kind of neighborhood or who's anybody who's of, you know, black or indigenous descent, it's kind of just what we are and where we stand, you know? In the period of the mid-1900s, there were many social movements that arose in the U.S. In opposition to such social issues, people used music to express their important messages and frustrations. Thus, the origin of many music genres. I think counterculture is like one of the only things that creatively creates a really big space, whether it's in music, in movies, in film, like, in just in all, in clothing, you know. So. The driving force that keeps counterculture music and art alive is resistance to the mainstream as well as remaining unknown. Things have changed a lot since the creation of counterculture music and art, particularly the way that we interact with each other due to the invention of social media. In our day and age, Anything and anyone can become widely known overnight. I, I feel like um, in social media causing a shift in kind of culture, I think it's something I think about and I think it, it's definitely a big impact because I like now I kind of, and I think it used to happen back in the day with music, but like even if I go to like, let's say I took a trip to Montreal and like they were talking like New Yorkers and it's just like, I think it, in an extent you have more access to culture um, and you see it more often and I think it merges and um, yeah I think I think it has a, a positive and negative effect you know depending on the way you look at it because um, I think it's easier to be exploited to an extent and use for profit instead of like what we're actually trying to open but then on the other end it gives access to um, people that may not have been able to see it before you know by the touch of a finger so balance. Now, unless you've been living under a rock for the past 30 years, you're aware of our recent world pandemic. In a time where face-to-face -face contact was restricted, social media became a way to share your information. Along with information, many different musicians and artists that were formerly underground quickly rose to stardom. So now that we're in an age where underground art is not so underground anymore, that makes us ask this question. Does art have to be unknown to be considered counterculture? Would popularity affect its ability to enact social change? What's the right word? I think it's been like kind of co-opted to make money off of it. I mean, you can look, like, look at punk. Punk became mainstream. Hip hop became mainstream. Um, but there still are pockets. They're still there, you know. Um, there still is an underground scene. There still is an indie scene. Um, but it feels like more so nowadays that uh, the incentive to sell out and make money is so strong that it doesn't last very long. Yeah. I 
think overall message in, in regards to just DJ and counterculture and everything is just like, uh, I think it's okay to be different. Um, and I think the more you, you lean into being different, the more you find spaces where you're accepted to be different. And I think uh, counterculture kind of comes from that of people being vulnerable. And I think, um, I think the main message is like, be okay with being vulnerable. And it's, it's a power, you know, in some regard. It's true, of course, that listening to music at home is a matter of personal preference and taste. Now, here's a... I guess when it came to music, the songs that were being shown just sounded the same. That's how I resorted to genres like punk or even indie. Listening to music is for me a form of meditation and a way of being able to isolate myself from all the problems in the world. I've always liked listening to music and music is a huge part of my family. I grew up around music. It's always been in my blood. It's my medicine and therapy. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah.